G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jono. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're looking at how to get some more versatility out of your single channel amplifier. Hopefully you would have seen recently I had my Ulbrich Stadium 80 modified and serviced by Jason at Headfirst Amplification. Uh, he put an effects loop in it, which has really taken it to the next level for me. And so it got me thinking, how can we get some more versatility out of our single channel amplifiers? First of all, a little bit about the Ulbrich Stadium 80. It is a single channel amplifier. It is point to point hand wired EL34, all tube goodness. Um, now it is a little bit different um, in the way that it has a couple of options in it. Uh, it's got two master volumes uh, and they're both uh, foot switchable. Uh, it also has a foot switchable boost and those are all built into the amplifier. Um, so that in of itself creates uh, a fair amount of versatility within just a single channel uh, platform. All that being said, there is still some ways that we can get some awesome versatility out of single channel amplifiers. There are three main points that come to mind when I think about versatility for a single channel platform and they are as follows. Point number one. Your amp has to have an effects loop. Uh, that's a really a no-brainer. Uh, to really be in control of effects that you want to use and stuff like that, you really need an effects loop. Uh, most single channel amps can be modified these days. It's a pretty common mod, uh, so it's definitely worth checking if your amplifier uh, is able to be modified. Point number two is headroom. Ascertain how much headroom your amp has to offer and then set it clean and, um, and set it loud. I've got the masters on this amp set to two o'clock, uh, so that does get the power amp working, but the input volume, the gain per se, is, is, is quite low. Um, so we've got a lot of clean headroom in this 80 watt amplifier. Point number three is uh, how small and convenient and feature packed of a pedal board can we add to a single channel amplifier to really bring it to the next level. Before we dive in, uh, there is just one caveat. My Lincoln Brewster Stratocaster here has a boost on the volume pot on the bridge pickup, uh, and that basically will add enough gain to pretty much create another channel uh, within the amplifier. And I use that feature a lot, so it's one thing to keep in mind. In covering these three questions, one and three are kind of going to go together. So we're going to hit number two first, and I'm just going to show you the clean sound of the amplifier, the very kind of dry sound of the amplifier, and then we're going to look at the other two. You may agree with me that that does sound pretty dry uh, but what there is there is a ton of clean headroom that we can really build upon. So we're going to hit numbers one and three now. Uh, we're going to hit the effects loop first. I've chosen two pedals. The first is a reverb from Love Pedal. It is the HSR3. I've chosen this pedal because one, it's cheap here in Australia. This one cost me about a hundred bucks. Um, and it's got heaps of features. There's a great um, pre-delay setting on it as well. Um, and we've got three options for uh, reverbs. So we're on the hall setting and the mix is at 12 o'clock and this is what it sounds like. Moving on to the second pedal in the effects loop, it is a delay pedal that I think goes really well with the reverb, is the Crazy Tube Circuits Time. Uh, it's a delay pedal with tap tempo, subdivision options, uh, heaps of feedback, uh, heaps of level as well, uh, and tap tempo, which really is a no-brainer for me with delay pedals. These days, I just won't touch a delay pedal unless it has a tap tempo function. And that sounds something like this.
There's a lovely modulation on that delay sound as well. It's just a great pedal. Uh, so let's hear both the reverb and delay together. The really cool thing about these two pedals is that we're only just kind of touching the surface of what they actually have to offer in the mix department. So uh, we can up the mix on both of them and get some really nice ambient tones as well. Now I've chosen a drive pedal for the final pedal in this little pedal board uh, and that is the Bad Cat Double Drive. It is a great overdrive pedal, it's got two identical circuits that fit into each other but they can also operate independently. So you can set one darker or one brighter, one gainier, one cleaner. You can stack them both into each other which is the way that I like to use it. So let's hear the dry sound of the amp with a little bit of reverb and delay and then I'll kick on the first side of the Bad Cat. That's just with everything on the Bad Cat set at 12 o'clock. It's just a great rhythm tone. Uh, and if I kick the boost on, on the guitar, I can take that into a lead tone, kind of like this. Now the final option there for gain is to kick on the other side of the Bad Cat. Uh, I'm going to keep the settings exactly the same on both sides of the pedal. That's just everything at 12 o'clock and that sounds like this. I think you'd agree there's more than enough gain in this setup to cover a plethora of different styles of music. But the thing that really makes all this possible is the effects loop because it lets us manipulate the gain stage of the amplifier with pedals uh, without affecting any of the modulation, the delay, the reverb that we're adding as well. Because obviously the effects loop, we're inserting those things in between the preamp and the power amp. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like and subscribe if you feel inclined and I'll see you on the next video.